The Bible says to let your light so shine before men that they will glorify your father, which is in heaven. Let your light so shine. Jesus says this, let your light so shine before men that they will glorify your father, which is in heaven. This tells me that our actions and how we interact, how we behave is imperative and it plays a very important role in how men, when they see us and, and, and whether or not they'll take a step to become a Christian or become saved, let's just not even just say become a Christian, being a follower of Christ. Because everybody's a Christian nowadays. There are a lot of people who have stepped away from Christ or who's just like, I'm not going to become a Christian. And a lot of times people who have backslidden or stepped away from Jesus, other Christians tend to start to talk about that person. Start to say if they were truly saved, they would have never stepped away from Christ. If they were truly saved, they would never have done this or that. And I'm here to tell you, if you were truly saved, you would not be speaking that way against a fallen brother or sister or someone who does not come to, does, doesn't come to Christ. Jesus sent his, God sent his only son. He sent his one and only son to die for us. He could have sat there in heaven and said, if they were this or that, they would know better. But he felt that we were worth his only son who died a terrible death for us. So when there is someone who is a lost and who is in a dark space and stumbling and falling, it is not our jobs as Christians to criticize them and to say if they were truly saved. That is pride. That is pride. That is a gnashing of the teeth. That is backbiting. If he, if Jesus will leave, Jesus talks about the shepherd that leaves the 99 to get the one. Why is it that in most churches, not all, but most churches, the 99 are talking about the one? There's a problem with that. There are people don't talk about how, what someone should or should not been doing. Sometimes they are wounded. There are people who have experienced terrible offenses within the church. And the thing is, a lot of people will use the word as a weapon. Well, the word of God said not to be offended and, and not to this. They can forgive you. They can be offended, hurt, wounded, and still go about their business and just step away. Have you ever seen an animal that is wounded? That animal sometimes could be aggressive because it's hurt and it's guarding that, that wound, the sight. Have you ever seen a person that is wounded? Very rarely are they smiling. Instead, they're grimace. They have a look on their face. They're holding. They're bent over. They're crying. You very rarely go to an emergency room and see happy people in there. Something's going on. So it's the same thing. Someone that's been wounded, they leave because they're they're done. And sometimes they're wounded and they stay. Yeah, sometimes something happens. They get a poke and they still stay because they're believing God. And they still stay. You keep poking in the wound. You keep digging in the wound. You keep ripping the wound. You keep doing more and more. And eventually they buckle. And all they can do is go. Or they cry out and they lash out because you're coming one more time. People... Be led by the Spirit of God in, and be careful in how you talk about people. There are people who are, experiences, who are experiencing awful things, atrocities. There are people who has entered in and they truly have their hearts and mind open for God. And because what happens when you enter the church, you want to know God. When you decide you want to turn your heart over to him, you come in and you know what? You start trusting people to your left and your right. A lot of times later, they're taking you in. And yes, we're going to go in together and it's all good. And you're embraced until you make them upset. Until you fall in some cases. Until you may have a question, until they realize you don't fall under control. There's so many reasons, but they can turn on you. And what happens is this subtle thing begins to happen. And you'll see the body of Christ, people that you used to once talk to, stop talking to you. How you know that you are in a cult and not in the body of Christ is that when something happens with you, the rest of the church begin to treat you a certain way. People that used to talk to you don't talk to you no more. They've been given a directive not to fellowship with you, not to talk to you, not to be around you. That, my friend, is a cult. 
It is a cult. There are a lot of churches that are slaughterhouses, death, uh, pet cemeteries. If you ever seen that Stephen King movie a long time ago, it's the pet, and then someone found a cemetery, you can put it in, and it comes back to life. They, this person loved the pet so much, they put it in the pet cemetery, but came back and wasn't... It looks like the pet, but it's not the pet. So there's a lot of pet cemetery churches. Oh, you look like a pastor. You look like a Christian. You look like this, but you're not. Pet cemetery churches, colvins, tombs, all of that. That's what a lot of churches are. They say Jesus, but upon close scrutiny, once you get in and you're worshiping, you're doing whatever, and your eyes, you don't got your, you're not looking, you're not scanning your lanes, something comes on to you. This happens. Again, not all churches, but those churches that are truly about Jesus Christ and truly teaching and preaching his word, a lot of times they're not going to be full. A lot of times you're not going to know about them. Now, all I'm saying is this. We have to be mindful of one another and how we're treating people. There are people who fall away from Jesus Christ because legitimate things has happened to them. When I left God, and because I, did, I really didn't know God, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to try to be a Christian. You know, I, I knew I yearned for, I longed for God. But my first experience was just an awful situation. And I was a person like with me as a, uh, you know, being a single divorce now, single mother, you know, when you're going to church, I was always on time for church. I was normally there before church started, before Bible study. I would cook dinner early, have the children's clothes ready, help them with their homework, get things done, give them a bath, get them changed so we can go to Bible study during the week, bring them home. All of that, all those things. So everybody that's in church, they're not necessarily a problem, but sometimes things will happen. There's a young man who, he was a homosexual and he got saved. As I was reading about it, or actually he was doing testimony about it. And he truly had a desire for the Lord. And he's in the church and he's doing the things of God and he's really trying and truly want to know God. And at a conference, he went to a conference and he shared a room with a gentleman, another, a Christian gentleman, and they somehow ended up having a homosexual encounter over that time at the conference. He felt bad about it. He confessed it, talked to some key individuals. And from that point, they started to treat him poorly. He was no longer able to talk to leadership. Leadership was not taking any of his phone calls or returning them. And so they, of course, what happens a lot of churches, they don't talk to you. So they send what I call the minions out to talk to you. So they told me he had to go get counseling first. And they, they set these, uh, you had to meet these, uh, you, I don't know what the word will be, but you need to do this first and then we'll consider this. So he went to counseling, did the counseling when the time came for him to, let's say a review and they decide that never happened. Another set of standards, another set of, of, uh, of things that they put in place that he was supposed to do. And he kept doing that, doing that, doing that until finally he realized, you know what? Every minute was something new. They denied him going to another conference. They started treating him poorly. He left the church. Now he's out doing a video, right? People talking about him or oh, he is so either, you know, now people are either two of two things are happening, two damaging things. People are going, mm -hmm, I told you about them Christians. And then there's also those who are saying you're angry and you shouldn't be doing this. No, that young man is wounded. And that's what happens. To a lot of people, they're wounded. Now, how you talk about it and how you use your platform, I cannot tell anybody what to do. But I know I could not come on this platform to talk about things immediately after certain things occurred with me about a year or so ago. You know, God, God had to bring me to himself and thoroughly heal me before I can come on and talk about stuff, before I can tell people. Because what will happen is if you're not careful, you will spill out your pain on people and do more damage than good. Your whole thing that you always want to do when you get on any platform to talk about the Lord and to talk about things that's happening is to give people, okay, you need to get to God. Talk to them about things like that. It's never just to be a platform for you to just spew and talk about what had happened because then it's not going to, it's going to do more damage than good. What I'm telling you all is this. Those of you who 
have done certain things to people within the churches and then turn around and blame them, you'll be held accountable for that. You have men who have walked into church with hand in hand with their wives and something happens where the leader or someone in the church has slept with their wives and it was handled poorly. They either, something happened, the man lost his wife or what they do is they want to ostracize his wife. Things of that happen or he loses his wife altogether. So you go in there, you get a divorce or, or you, your marriage is broken up and they use the word of God to justify this action. There are women you walked in with your husband. Maybe y'all were having problems, whatever the case may be. Y'all go to the church or you get into the church. Something happens. Someone has an eye out for your husband. You are now without your husband. You no longer have the ear of your husband. And they use the word of God to justify doing something like that. There are people who have entered the house of God with their, their hearts completely open and right for God. And they end up, you're single, you're by yourself, and somebody's trying to help you or whatever. You end up in a sexual relationship with that person. People find out that woman is ran out of the church or that young man is ran out of the church or she's telling someone and they run her out and they treat her poorly or they treat that young man badly and they run him up out of the church and everything is done in this subtle way. It is true that, you know, we can't fellowship with people. We can't fellowship with darkness, but it doesn't mean I can't tell you about Jesus Christ. It doesn't mean that I cannot still, no matter what you're doing, exemplify his love. Understandably, that does not mean, understandably, that does not mean you're going to walk all over me and treat me crazy because we know Jesus told it as it was. But one thing that he was consistent in was demonstrating Christ in his speech and in his lifestyle consistently. And that's how he drew people to him. He was was not influenced by people. When he went to sit with the thieves, when he went to sit with the publicans and sinners, it was because they wanted to hear what he had to say. His light was shining. And so they wanted to know he was the influence. He was the one that was influencing them. He was not being influenced. So we have to be careful how we are treating people. It's too easy for people to open up their mouth and say, if you were truly about God, you wouldn't leave. That's not true. Sometimes God will take you up out of there or you will die there. Sometimes it gets hot there because you need to leave there. Sometimes it needs to just be you and God and let God, let Jesus tell you what to do. Do not let people tell you you don't have any covering. And people may unfriend me here and that's fine. Do not let people tell you that you don't have any covering and so you're just lost. Are they greater than God? If you don't have covering because you're not going to their church and you're just getting before God say, Lord, guide me, and they tell you you're not covered, then God is powerless. And we know that God is almighty. Be careful how people, be careful how you treat people. Be careful how you open your mouth against others. Just as that person, yes, that person has a responsibility to stand before God to give an account for themselves. You will give an account for the role that you played in causing that person to stray. Because what happens is a lot of people come to the house of God and they don't have on, they, they decide that instead of getting froggy, when you first take that step to disrespect them and to slight them, they decide within themselves that they're not going to react to you the way that they normally would. They don't check you on the spot. Okay. They're not popping off like they normally would pop off if they were outside or before they got saved. So you get away with things and you get comfortable with it and you keep doing it. And that person just gets tired and leaves. Some people, they act up, and but they eventually leave. But at the end of the day, the things that you have done, you will give an account. There are people who have totally went back into darkness because somebody wounded them as they were seeking God. Wounded them and stood by, sat by, stood by watching them bleed out. And then blamed them for the blood getting on the floor. You hit them across the head with a bat and you criticize them for howling. You poke their eye out and then you shun them because now they only got one eye. 
And so that person leaves and think God must not want me and the enemy is on top of the stuff that you've already planted, the enemy plants seed and they stray from God because you're not strong enough or something in them is just not letting them see the truth. And that person goes over here and die off. There are people who have killed themselves because of that. You were one of the reasons why that person, it may have been sparked by a different person but you or a different situation, but you were a part of the deposits that leads to that suicide. There's a lot of people who are no longer affiliated with God and they've gone totally left field. A hatred for God. And while they're accountable for that, know that there's some of you who are responsible for planting that seed in them. Through your rejection, through your malice, through your dissension, through your evilness, through the things that you did, that person's gone. There are people who are back in the club. There's people who's back to their old lifestyle, back to their drinking. There are people, and I'm going to say this very carefully. I'm going to let you know this is not to give anyone a pass. As I said, this is not to give anyone a pass. This is not to give anyone a pass because they're all going to be held responsible. But I'm going to tell you, there are people, these mass shooters, some of y'all did something. Some of y'all, they've some of these people, they try to know God and they saw something that changed their mind. They became atheists. They decided, I don't believe in God no more. Some of them, some of you didn't, some of you failed to obey God and witness to him. These things that you're reading about, mothers killing their babies, fathers killing their families, people killing people. Some of these killers, you got to know, regardless of how much we may dislike them, okay, or think this is awful, that's a soul. That mother that can kill her baby is somebody that at some point, maybe one of you failed to go and help that woman out. Maybe that woman was stressed out. She was having a hard time. She was a single mother and you all did nothing. Maybe you castigated that mother. Maybe you castigated that father. Maybe you shunned that brother. Maybe that man just only needed a word, someone to just sit with him and talk to him. But you all pack up your stuff and go right home to your family and do your own thing. A lot of these people that are doing these atro atrocious things are people that Christians have failed. And I'm going to take out the word Christian. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm not going to take any denominations. I don't want to be affiliated and say, I'm this denomination, that denomination, because the denominations and the divisions and the division, which is what really denominations are, divisions within religion is what's causing us to not be effective because everyone's separated and against one another. And the Bible says a kingdom divided cannot stand. So that's why everything else is taking so much more prevalence and so much more powerful because the church is divided. Divided. So I'm going to say, I'm not going to say I'm this denomination, I'm that. I am a follower of Jesus Christ. So uh, many people who are supposed to be followers of Christ, okay? So I'm going to say you just a Christian. You failed to talk to that person. You failed to take time out. You failed to witness because there's a lot of Christians, not all, you're not witnessing to people. You go to church, you're on an auxiliary, you're doing different things, but you're not witnessing to somebody. You will pass a person on the corner begging on your way to church. You pass them on the corner. You know what? A lot of times, unless I don't have any money on me, I'm gonna give them money. I'm gonna give them some, say God bless you or whatever. I'll stop and get someone a meal. And I'm not just doing it to try to make God feel better. I do it because I have a heart, an ache in my heart for them. But a lot of you sit there and criticize what and, and think about why you're not giving them no money because what they're probably going to do with it. Is that your place? How many of you have passed angels unaware? Nobody's witnessing to nobody. Everybody's just in a building, giving tithes, giving offerings, and thinking this is how it's supposed to be. But a lot of these people, these criminals, these people that's lost and doing things are wounded people. And some of them, a lot of them were once in church. I was one of them. I was in church. I was seeking God. And I saw and experienced some absolute wickedness from people who call themselves men and women of God. Wickedness. And I'm going to give you something about myself before I cut this video out because it's going longer. I'm someone, I got my life together. So I'm not a person, I'm thin-skinned or petty. I've seen wickedness. 
and I strayed from Jesus. But you know what happened? Jesus came and got me himself and showed me something different. And it wasn't inside a church that I experienced him. So I tell every one of you, give God all of you. Those of you who have stepped away, you step back in line with God. You get back on the horse with him. Don't allow what someone have done to you to keep you from your, from your reward. A lot of you have been called to do things, been called to do things for God because you had the heart. You had the heart. You had a heart for Christ. And that's why you were able to get wounded so badly. And I'm going to tell you, those of you who talk about, oh, it's not a big deal and, and you want to, you want to criticize them. No, no, no. That's not true. You see, when someone comes in and their heart is right for God, sometimes they're still young and they're, they're young in Christ and they're misguided, but they have something for God that they're so open that when you wound them, it's devastating. They didn't have a chance to, to do this. They didn't have a chance to get away from you. They didn't have a chance to move, to duck. You got them dead. You got them center mass. And that is something that devastates a person because you're dealing with their soul. So I'm going to end this video with saying those of you who have strayed away from God on account of men, get back on the horse, get to know God, get to know him, repent, go to him and know that he has a plan for you. Those of you that's done it, it's best that you ask the Lord to forgive you. Stop sitting there on your high horse. Pride, pride is something that will humble you. Because you're on your wide horse, your high horse, and criticizing other people. That's not what you're supposed to do. You think about how God saved you. What if the Lord treated you the way that you treat other people? Where would you be today? All right, guys. Have a great day. And uh, I know this was a long video, but this needed to be said. Bye.